React Compiler 1.0 is out. I'm going to show you how easy it is to integrate it into a Tanstack start application or really any Vite based application. And I got to tell you, it's so easy that it would be a really short video if I did just that. So I'm going to go in the extra step and we're going to take a look at how much of an impact the React Compiler makes on React performance. And I got to tell you, I was really surprised. It makes React faster than I ever thought it could be. Let's get right into it. All right, let's start off on our terminal. We're going to build a start application. There's a couple of different ways you can do this. So you could just say my compiler demo and then do add-ons and specify that you want the compiler or you can do it interactively. My compiler demo and then down in here, select compiler. But I like to use the UI. So let me show you how the UI works. If I just use dash dash UI, I can bring up the UI. Now I can set the name to my compiler app and down here I can specify the compiler and you can actually see over here in the preview what actually changes. So if I turn on and off the compiler, you can see that the only thing that changes is we're bringing in this one Babel plugin called the Babel plugin React compiler that's also added to the package JSON and then we're just referencing it right here in Vite React. That's that's all you need to actually start with the React compiler. It's that easy. All right, let's build this application. And while it's doing that, let's talk about the impact of this. So this is going to slow down Vite because you're bringing in Babel and you're using Babel for that transform. You don't normally have to do that. So that actually does slow things down a little bit. But the performance impact that you get is so good that I think it but the performance impact that you get is so good that I think that's really the trade-off that you're looking for. But I think the performance impact is definitely worth a little bit of a dev side impact in terms of, but I think the production performance that you get as an upgrade is definitely worth any kind of dev side. But I think the production performance that you get as an upgrade is definitely worth the downside of the dev experience slowdown to the extent that you get a slowdown. All right, now that that's created, I'm gonna jump in there and we're going to take a look at that application. So I'm going to bring it up in dev mode. All right, now that we've got this up, now the question is, well, it's working. So how do we actually know if anything is actually memoized by the compiler? So let's bring up our inspector and then go to the components. And as we go down the component tree, you can see this special memo tag next to the component that's actually been memoized by the compiler. So for example, our root document is memoized. This header is memoized and the entire body of our application is memoized. So what does that actually mean? What is the compiler actually doing? Well, let's go over to our page and see what's actually happening. So here's the index page we were just taking a look at. So here's our homepage route. It's really just this one component app. And in there is this list of features as well as this huge JSX for all of the formatting. So what the compiler is doing is it's looking at the structure of that component, seeing that it's effectively a static component and then it's memoizing all of that, all of that JSX, so that once that JSX is run once and that VDOM is created once, it then holds all of that VDOM as a memoized object. And then any time that this component is asked to render again, it just returns that right away. And so you get instantaneous updates on your component. So what happens if you have some logic in here that isn't appropriate in that case? Well, what you can do is you can use a pragma to turn off memoization, you can just say use no memo and you can refresh. I can go back in the inspector and see what happens. So if I take a look again at my components, we can see down here that app is no longer memoized. If I were just to remove that, hit refresh, and now we can see the app is memoized again. So on a module by module basis, you can decide whether you want memoization or not. So let's talk about how much of an impact memoization is going to have in something that's not static and something that's dynamic. All right, so I'm going to bring up this compiler demo project. All the source for that is available to you for free in a link in the description right down below through GitHub. So it's pretty much exactly the same application that we had before, the same starter application, but I've gone and created this new route called Bigtable, and Bigtable has a big table in it. It's got 5,000 people in this table here, and there's five fields for each person. So this is 25,000 elements, and it just takes a while for JSX to actually process all of that. And 
So let's take a look at what happens when you don't have the compiler enabled. So I'm, in, so I'm still in my cursor, which is really cool. This is the new cursor 2.0 and their embedded browser. I'll go into my Vite config and then I'll turn off the React compiler, hit save. I'll reboot the server just to make sure that it's in that mode. Go back in here. And now I'm gonna bring up the console because in there we've got this actual duration. So the actual duration is the time to render the component that's in red here, this big table component. So what's actually happening is every time I change the page level counter, well, the page is re-rendering, which means that I need to re-render this big table component. That re-render of the big table component ends up creating 25,000 VDOM nodes and doing that computation. And even though there's nothing actually changing in the browser DOM outside of this one little two item here, all of that work is taking 265 milliseconds on this browser. Same thing with this table level counter down here. Anytime I make that change, the only one that should actually be doing all that computation is when I change the sorting parameters. And you can see just how slow it is to do this but it takes a while. It takes, you know, 325 milliseconds there. So really this should be almost a no-op. It should take zero milliseconds to do a page level counter. It should take zero milliseconds to do the table level counter since this actually isn't affecting this table at all. So let's see, is the memoization good enough for that? So if I go back in my vconfig and I bring back the compiler, so we get hundred milliseconds for the first render. That makes sense. But now look at this, that's amazing. Actually, I'm not getting any number at all and I'll show you why that is. But if I do a table level counter here, I am getting that number and it is you know, 0.3 milliseconds. So literally nothing's happening outside of just the refresh of this. And then if I go and make that change, then I actually pay that price of that big sort. So let's go take a look at the code and I'll show you exactly why this is happening. So here's our app component. And to get those numbers, that actual duration, we use a render callback that we then pass to the React profiler. So you can see the counter is actually outside of that profiler. So what's happening is that when I hit the page level counter, the compiled code is smart enough to know that the only things that it needs to change are the count, and then it needs to rerun counter only, and it actually memoizes counter and profiler separately. So that's why you only ever get the profiler updating when you actually make a change inside a big table. It is so cool. All right, now let's take a look at big table and see how it's broken down. We have a similar sort of thing. We have the count and then we have the counter and then we have all the data related to the sort field. And only when that state changes will sort options and person table get updated. So that's why it's basically broken this component into two separate pieces. So what you're getting with this is fine-grained updating, somewhat similar to what you get with Solid. So in uncompiled React, you're gonna get a refresh of the whole component, just like we saw before. Any change to those counters means that you're gonna get a whole page update. With compiled React, you only change the portions of the DOM that are actually relevant to the state change. And you can start simplifying your components. For example, we can typically just take out this use memo. I can just call sort people right there. It really simplifies my component. And if I take a look over at our browser, we see exactly the same performance dynamics. The table level counter is just as fast. The page level counter is effectively ignored. And it's only when you do the sorting that it actually makes an impact. It's just wild. I know I've talked about the React compiler before, but before it was kind of just in this alpha stage and it wasn't something you'd want to use regularly. I think at this point, it's the kind of thing you're going to want to use in any React application. You're going to want to enable it in your Next.js applications. You don't want to use it in your Tanstack applications. It is a phenomenal way to bring much, much better performance to your React applications and really simplify the code of your components. All right, if you have any questions or comments, be sure to put that in the comment section right down below. And in the meantime, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you really like the video, hit the subscribe button and click on that bell. And you'll be notified the next time a new Blue Collar Coder comes out.